had a certain you know, raw format they want to change it. or things like that. So if, if you have this on a Word document. I don't. That was actually what Stafford themselves wrote. Ours was. Oh, then they would have it on the Word document. Yeah, they would, yeah. So if you could get that to me and we could change it so it's pertinent to me, or you could change it Just so change that you get the, all the right. I mean, I don't know if it has the corridors or anything. No, it just mentions county line to county line, but okay. it says within your corridor. So. And then I can bring the resolution over next time around, or do you want me to get your resolution over now and you guys can go for it? You want to see the true document, or you want to? So just bring it up, just make it, put on, make it a better resolution on your stuff. Yeah, yes. This is probably a scenario that never come up. What would happen if there was a fire in the north end of town, north end of the county, and our pump truck happened to be up there and there was fire in St. John? Uh, there's always going to be a backup here. There's always going to be something like that. Well, it would be we'll a have, bike, but we'll yeah. have one truck here. And I mean, it would be no different than us having one fire at the north end of town and one fire at the south end of town. I mean, we're going to, we have two trucks, so there's always going to be one. I mean, not saying that there's not a situation where there's six fires. And, right. and if, you know, it's the same, it'd be like the same as if you guys had a fire that you couldn't handle with just your two trucks. Uh, we would call Stafford or Maxwell. Stafford. Right. Maxwell. So this cone tutor area isn't set and stuff. Yeah, we just basically oh, used oh, our, um, the EMS corridor to split the county into thirds. But it's not set and stuff. I'll move to have ordinance 763 drawn up. Law order. Okay, you want to move to approve 1671 cents the first page is basically an, uh, an exact estimate of what the sheriff's department did to their truck um, the, uh, the, the the total cost um, including everything there for all that equipment would be two thousand two hundred eighteen dollars um, what I'm requesting at this point uh, to outfit the truck would be the the uh, to start off with would be the $1,800 figure. And what that's going to cover is everything that has a hash mark beside it, um, which is going to be your uh, light bar, um, the siren light bar controller, 100-watt uh, siren speaker, the bracket, shipping, and uh, of course we're not going to have to deal with sales tax. Then I don't know if the shipping will be $25 because we're not going to be shipping all the same amount of stuff. Um, I, we, we did, right now we've got the truck, we've got it operational in a temporary sense and that we've got, we've got a small light bar on it and a, a, a siren in it just so, because it was better to use it for temporary patrol than the blazer, uh, pretty much. Um, but we found when we put the siren that we've got in it now is there's a, there's a shroud that basically looks like a megaphone over the speaker that didn't fit underneath there and we had to take that off. So. 
again, we're the, the biggest issue we're running into now is with a brand new truck and nothing we have fits. Um, so I would now, um, I don't know if he's here. Deputy Fisher is going to be bringing their truck. Um, if you guys would like to see it, it will be the, the exact same setup as what they've got. If you would be interested in actually looking inside the truck, seeing the console, um, number one, seeing the, the uh, excellent work that, that Kevin did on the truck. So if you guys would, would be interested in it, if you want to look at that before you make a decision, then I'm totally fine with that. You want to approve the 1821 and the back page 516? Yeah, the back page is, is the console, yep. which is going to house radios, radar unit, all that. And the 1800 is going to cover the light bar. Um, what, what, what we're going to get away from is, is in, the, in the old Dodge, we had, I think, 16 switches, individual rocker switches that controlled the light bar, the power to your radar, the power to the flashlight charger, and all that. And I think that's where some of our problems came from. We had so many wires running under there. Nobody knew what went to what. If a switch went out, then you're chasing stuff. The, uh, the siren light controller is, is a head unit that controls the, the, the siren and the lights all in one box. It's got a slider, uh, slider switch that is going to control the majority of your light bar and then another four or five switches you can set up for whatever you want. And the, uh, the extra stuff, basically the reason I'm not asking for the full 2200 at this point, I mean, if, if you want it, if you choose to do that, that, that's obviously your decision. But if we can start out with a light bar that will give us 360 degree coverage, um, if we see fit to put some extra other auxiliary lights on there, that would be within my spending authority. And we could do that at a later time. So, really knocking out some of the auxiliary lights was just one way to make it not look like so much, so much of a hit, such a high dollar figure. This console that uh, you're talking about, was this the one you were talking about that it's removable? Mm -hmm. Did you say something about uh, there was something in the, uh, one of the trucks that could be removed and used, utilized outside of the vehicle? No, no, I, I think what you remember, I, I was, I thought we were going to be able to use the old console from the old okay. truck. Okay. And, and where we ran into that is the way the seats were built in the old truck. It came with Basically, the way the console mounted is when you remove the, the uh, stop console in the center part of the seat, it left the seat rails there, and that's what you bolted the old console to. The newer truck doesn't come with any of that. It just basically is dead, dead space down there between the two captain's chairs. So there's no way to secure the old console in there. What about installation costs? That would be 500, right? Uh, something going on at the 
Yeah, I just, I like to have a little safety factor. If you think you can get by with, and, and this is, a, I would suggest you wait a little bit, run the plant till you get used to it, see where you're at, see if you have any spikes. If you find out that we're running along here, we don't see any spikes. Well, then maybe you can do that, you know, and feel safe. I just, like I say, I just, when I start out, I like to have a little bit of room in there in case there's a glitch. Which there sometimes is, you know. So that's, but like I say, that's where we are on the plant right now. The, the plant is in operation. We've got a couple of little things to do to finish up, but uh, we're just about there. The water well, uh, Clark is has done the sampling on the first well, the one that we started way back at the beginning, okay? They're ready to start drilling on that next week. We've got all of the samples back and it's, everything is okay. The second well, the test, <coughs> they did a test well, pulled a sample on it, and we came back with some small amounts of volatile organic carbons. Styrene, xylene, we are, like, make sure I tell you the right thing. On xylene, we are at one micrograms per liter. That's a million. Okay. The limit is 10,000, and you're at one. But, like Ned Marsh says, we didn't expect to see anything. And so we're looking at doing a retest that next week. We can't understand why it's there. KDHE has said, you know, you're so low, they have no concern. But again, we didn't see any on the other well, and we don't know why it's there. And so, we're going to plan right now is to do a retest on that. Just, you know, like I said, we don't know if Air in the sample or in the testing or what. It's just, and what that is, is most commonly the solvent. Now, it could have been that somebody dumped solvent someplace and it finally worked its way over there. I don't know. If, if it ever becomes a problem, what little research I've done on it, it's not difficult to remove that stuff. Like they say, you're at one, the limit's 10,000. KDHE has them. I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of it. We're just trying to figure out why it showed up. Okay. So anyway, uh, you know, Ned, Ned was concerned. He said this really shouldn't even be there. I mean, he said we shouldn't even be seeing any of it. So that's why I want to do this second retest on this, just to clarify. Could, he said he's concerned, you know, the sampling of this is so critical and the technique used, to get, it's so small amount of anything can, can cause a, 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 it to show up. So he would like to be there when they do this so we can just rule out any human error at all or any sampling technique uh, for this. And Clark's handled the, the testing in the past and sent this in. So Ned said that he would be available to do this and witness this test to, to eliminate any of that. And, you know, he said he could, you know, 250 to, depends on how long uh, Clark's there on the side, 250, 300 dollars, he'd be out there and witness it. And that way we can, if it shows up again, we could say, well, what is it? Is it sampling technique again or whatever? So he said that, you know, if we want him there, he's available and that way that would take that part out. So. I think if we're gonna if we're gonna go to the you know the expense of doing this, we might as well do the, the best we can. I'm just curious how big a sample is it? Half the size of the water bottle and how many ounces. Something like that. Yeah. I yesterday I was talking to KDHE about this when we get everything squared away. And the lady told me she said, We have had guys pull samples that put gas in their pickup before. Because they handled the gas hose, gasoline from their hands got into the sample and will register. That's how sensitive this stuff is. 
Then the only other thing that I have is we're gonna, we have a change order coming up on the water wells. Um, Clark has looked at the north well, I forget the number, the north well, three. three. There's not a, an air release valve on that well. And they, they recommend that we put an air release valve on that. And then as part of the treatment plant, we have a check valve so that the water can't flow backwards through the plant. Well, what happens is the south well, or the east well, here, well five, without the head on it, the check valve in that well leaks. And so, which allows the column to go dry, and so Clark is going to come in and put run dry bearings on the line shaft, so to take care of that. Uh, the total for that, those two, is uh, $3,500, $3,600. Um, again, because this is part of the project, you get the loan forgiveness on it. Uh, it just all goes right in. But, uh, just letting you know uh, where we're at. And right now, the only other chip change order that we have is on the water lines, and it's going to be a negative. So you're going to, you want, it's going to be about, I think, fifteen or sixteen thousand dollar negative. And it's, we just didn't put in, do all the boring and, and everything that we had in there. So and that keeps us more under budget. That's been our goal all along, just to make sure that we were under budget. So that's where we are. Any other questions or anything? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Yep. It's getting 
like this too much. Like I said, when you go over the upper bottom, you're just, you got inches instead of feet. Oh, yeah. We yeah. got jacks on our trailers. And it's, yeah, I mean, you, you just hand. barely miss it. Yeah. And I mean, that's. I have talked to the railroad numerous times that, you know, it's, it needs more work because the train is pushing out on that east side here. So I, I blame them a lot for part of this trouble. I think, you know, I've got a road issue there, but that, that crossing was. I mean, if, if somebody gets hung up on there or tears something up, I would think they would be. Exactly. I, I don't know. They're not. They're not. <laughs> no. Well, that, that's like hitting a train. You're going to be. You're the one that gets blamed. Something else. What about all the water down there? Yeah, there's no place for it to go. There's no storm sewer. There's nothing. That, yeah, that's the whole deal. There's no place for it to really go. I currently would like to have it on the west side of the road. I don't know if there's any culverts left in there at all. There's nothing. It's always on me. It's backed up on me. Something needs to be done. Mosquitoes are going to be in the road. I think he, he'll we throw a treat there. Uh, Try to throw cubes in there. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. nobody mows it or nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Is that sure? No, it's not. I love my bar. I've talked to the railroad about mowing that before, and when they have the mowers come through, they do do it, but it's not on, it's not on a regular basis. Can we do it, Bill, like we would the citizens?
Somebody said it was basically too much of a pain in the butt to carry yeah. that with them, and to me that's nonsense. I mean, it wouldn't, you be, have, it wouldn't be different than my antique pickup. You buy one tag and you're done. You don't, you don't do anything every year. 
Yeah, but you're still required to have your license, your insurance and registration with you. That's right. It, it seemed to me that they were trying to get away with having to carry that registration no. with them, right? What they were trying to get away from was having to carry an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. And what the request was is could it be put on a driver's license size card and laminated so it could oh, be okay. tucked in a wallet or put someplace to where it wasn't going to blow out and you weren't trying to find a spot for, you know, a half sheet of paper. Sure. Yeah, well, I mean, that's something that's going to have to be done through, through the city office. So we're not quite there yet. What? So what do we need to do? It's going well, to be it's, a, I'm going to have to get the ordinances out and see if I can rework them. It's going to be a pretty dim block to not be able to be seen in a thousand feet. You can take a flashlight and see it a thousand feet away. I mean, I don't, I don't see that it's all moved. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't see that it's. I mean, if there's a headlight on it and a taillight on it, unless it's just itty bitty, but you can buy little LED lights the size of a quarter that can be seen thousand feet away so so what would be the liability of the city if we pass an ordinance that doesn't fit with the statutes and if there's something that happens I guess you know that's my job as city clerk is to look at the risk um, involved for the city and so that would be my question I would think it would make the most sense to have your well, city attorney um, research case law and that kind of thing on similar issues because I'm sure as many other places have have adopted these kind of ordinances there's got to be something out there you would, you would think that, that might shed some light on it. I mean as you know speaking for the police department it doesn't matter to me as long as the thing is able to be seen and we don't have to deal with an accident or somebody's saying you know I ran over this guy in a golf cart because he didn't have appropriate you know, and, and that's the other thing, you know, you got to have, just like on a regular vehicle, you got to have appropriate side marking lights so you can see them from the side and stuff as well. So if all you've got is a headlight that's projecting forward and a taillight that's projecting rear and you can't, there's no reflectors or anything on the side, then that's where your liability is going to be. Anybody that's driving a golf cart or anything in the city that only weighs a thousand pounds, I would think would be a defensive guy. They'd be watching for him. And I don't have a problem with driving go carts, golf carts on the street after dark as they've got a headlight tail. So that much. So I don't need to. It's got tail lights and turn signals. I mean, you got bicycle driving, driving all over without lights and right. tail lights or nothing. You got bicycle running stop signs. You got bicycle driving down the wrong side of the road, going the wrong direction. What's the difference between a bicycle and a golf cart? I can try to put together an ordinance and bring it to you, or. Want me to talk to Rod? I just need two right, directions. Right. I'd say put one together and talk, have Rod look it over and see if there's any issues. And tell Rod this is what the council thinks they want to do and see what he says. Okay. So after dark and not register one time registration. One time registration. What's your cutting your probably should point out at this point that probably two of you shouldn't be poking on this, do you think? Since you are part of, I mean, would that be considered a... Because you don't think Troy has a golf cart? No. Or Mark has a golf cart? Well, that's me. Well, 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 hang, hang on, hang on, let John finish. Okay. Because it's a, I would, I, I'm questioning whether it is a, what is the term? Uh, well, because that, they're like, golf cart owners? It wouldn't be any different. Yeah. How is that any different? Than, different? Yeah. Then us saying I'm just, we're voting I'm on the street sign and we all drive cars. 
don't think that's a I don't think that's a problem. Why are you making any money off of it? No, I mean, no, but it's a valid question. I mean, get it out. <coughs> well, you don't think anybody owns a golf cart. Should you vote on it? No, I'm not saying that at all. No, no, no. She said she's yeah. just questioning whether that could be a conflict. Sorry. Business. No, it's okay. She just, she's yeah. just doing her job. She's making sure that she's bringing up something that looks like a potential conflict so of interest. If I was selling golf carts, <laughs> right. that would be something. Yeah, right. there was monetary right. gain right. involved. Yeah, that's what I mean. Nobody's Okay, drive after dog, one-time registration, laminated car, anything else? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Can I, can I offer something for the registration part of it? Yes, yeah. please. He, and, and he just mentioned it, and it, and it makes sense. We have the Taylor Printing makes our stickers that we use for our bike registrations. Oh, yeah. It just says St. John Police Department, and it's got a number on it. That's a great idea. I mean, if, if, if you're really looking for a very simple way to do it, the city could have... You know, you could. Now you're going to have to have the ones that are already registered come back in and get that sticker. But you know, you could just start. Or when from, they come the next time. Right, and you could. You know, I think. I think they made. I think the last time they made 500 or a thousand for us, and it, I mean it really wasn't 20 or 30 bucks. I mean it was, it was pretty simple. You could just start at, you know, zero zero one. And surely in the history of St. John, you're never going to have more than a thousand. <laughs> but you never know. Is that going to Well, I I think that the two still have to remain separate because the worksite utility vehicles are um, handled under KSA, correct? Mm -hmm. It's a separate it's, yeah. it's a separate ordinance for us. The golf cart that that is strictly by city ordinance. It's not handled.